Hello, I'm Lee, and I want to present to you some information that I found through experimentation on an insulin series regarding cephalic phase response. And specifically, I was trying to answer a question, and that is, will artificial sweeteners break my fast? And by break my fast, the real question was, will artificial sweeteners increase my insulin and thereby stop my fat burning mode? Um, I like to have in a lot of artificial sweeteners. Um, we could talk about what it does to your gut and what it talk what it does to your brain. But for the sake of this video, it's really only a question of what it does to your insulin. So let's get into that just a little bit. So first of all, let's talk about fasting for fat loss. So there's this concept that high insulin causes lipogenesis or fat storing. If your insulin is elevated, you are storing fat. And if your insulin is low, it causes lipolysis or fat burning. And that, that's pretty much all there is to fat gain and fat loss. And if you look up lipogenesis versus lipolysis on Google, you'll find something that looks like this. And it says right here, very clearly, that fat accumulation or fat breakdown is lipogenesis and lipolysis and the major contributor to that is insulin or your insulin levels. High insulin, of course, is lipogenesis, storing fat, and low insulin is lipolysis for fat burning. And that's one of the major concepts that we use in intermittent fasting. So we have all of these different in intermittent fasting schedules. You have the 16-8 diet and the warrior diet. Some people do OMAD or 24, 12, 12, eat, stop. There's all these different periods of fasting where you would just take a break from food for a little while and that would cause your insulin to go low and that causes you to get into a fat burning mode. That's the major premise of um, fasting for fat loss. And the way it works is when you stop eating, the, dura the duration of your fast causes you to have lower and lower insulin levels. So I grabbed this from, let's see, betterhumans.pub. They referenced the sweet spot for intermittent fasting by this doctor. And what he shows you is this graph of your insulin level based on the number of hours fasting. And what you can see is that the longer you fast, the lower your insulin is. And therefore, the greater your lipolysis is and the less your lipogenesis is. So if you want to burn fat and lose fat, one of the great ways to do it is to do intermittent fasting, go for a period of time, decrease your insulin, and you burn fat. So the big question here in the um, fasting community is what effect do artificial sweeteners have on your fast and your lipolysis or your fat burning? Um, I like Splenda and Truvia, and I like to drink these Gatorade Zeros. So the question is, will those things raise my insulin while I'm fasting? And specifically, um, we have to address what's called cephalic phase response. Now, the cephalic phase response is this idea that when you eat something that's sweet, it will tell your body to produce insulin um, and just like if you ate sugar it's getting ready to digest those foods and even though it's not real sugar um, it prepares your body it increases your insulin and therefore causes you to go into lipogenesis that's the theory um, and because of that theory a lot of people believe that um, the cephalic phase response will cause your fast to be broken or at least cause you to have diminished um, fat burning during your fast. Um, if you look up and read the studies on this, what you're going to see is that it's completely inconclusive. Basically, what the medical studies say is that for some people, it does impede their fat loss. And for some people, it doesn't. And for some people, one artificial sweetener will do it and a different artificial sweetener won't. So the real question was, do the artificial sweeteners that I take impede my fat loss? So here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to look at which artificial sweeteners I, I take. I, I drink a lot of Gatorade Zero. Um, in Gatorade Zero, we can see right here that uh, 
There's water, citric acid, natural flavors. And down on the bottom, it has modified food starch. That, that sounds a little bit like sugar. I don't know. Sucralose and um, some some other stuff that I can't pronounce. So, and, and these are artificial sweeteners. And that could cause a cephalic phase response. Um, I also like to drink coffee. And I, I have a lot of coffee. I might have like six cups of coffee a day. We can, we can discuss that in a, in a different video. But when I'm at home, I tend to put Truvia in my coffee. And that's Stevia leaf and some other artificial sweeteners that are mixed into there. And when I'm at the office, there's no Truvia. I guess I could bring it in. But they have Splenda laying around. And I'll have Splenda and I'll put that in my coffee. So the question was, what happens if I consume these things, what does it do to my insulin? So here's what I did. I took a, a pack of Splenda and a pack of Truvia and I dumped it into this Gatorade Zero and I shook it up and I had a bunch of it. Um, I had a, a full bottle and then about 10 minutes later, well, let me back up before, before I do that. Um, I actually went and I did a fast. I was 40 hours fasted. I hadn't had any food at all for 40 hours. And I did my blood insulin levels, and I came up with a level of 6.3, um, which is which is a pretty low level. That's, that's actually very low insulin. Anything under 19.6 is considered healthy, but because I was fasted for so long, it dropped all the way down to 6.3. And then I took the Splenda and the Truvia, I mixed it in the Gatorade Zero, and I drank it, and then 10 minutes later, I drank some more, and five minutes later, I drank some more. Now, I happen to know from doing glucose measurements, um, when I drink something with sugar in it, I can watch my glucose levels rise for about 15 minutes, and then they'll start to decline for another 15 minutes. And what that tells me is that it takes about 15 minutes for those insulin um, to start counteracting my blood sugar when it starts to decline again. Um, so I was thinking that the response to this could take up to 15 minutes, um, but it could be quicker than that. So I said, you know what, I'm going to stretch it out. I'm going to have a bunch of this right away. Then I'm going to wait 10 minutes and have some more. I'm going to wait five more minutes and I'm going to have some more. And then I'm going to do a second blood test. So with the first blood test, 6.3, and then I did the uh, intake of these artificial sweeteners, and then I did a second blood test, and by golly, I think that's the first time I've said by golly in like maybe my whole life, by golly, my insulin dropped down to 5.5. My insulin did not go up, it went down. I don't, I don't even know how or why. Um, that's what happened though. My insulin level went from, from 6.3, down to 5.5. So the question of do artificial sweeteners raise your insulin level while you're fasting? The answer is the artificial sweeteners that I take do not increase my insulin. And therefore, it does not cause lipogenesis and it does not impede my lipolysis and it does not break my fast. Now, it might be killing me in other ways. We can have that discussion another day. But for this day, we're talking about fat loss. And for me personally, in these specific artificial sweeteners, it does not impede my fat loss. So I hope that answers your questions. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll catch you later.